Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do a parabola. What we're doing regarding a parabola is inverse functions. Now first of all if you do the vertical test what you would notice is that it is a function. We are only touching one point. So we know that the parabola is a function. But is it one to one? If you look, it is now touching two points. Now when it is touching two points, then it is many to one. And from our discussion, we know that if it is many to one, then the inverse is not a function. So which means that when I do the inverse of this parabola, I will see that it is a relation. It is not a function. When we are doing this, let us first start by changing the formula. Now the rule says inverse means x becomes y and y becomes x. So what do I have? I have x is equal to 3y squared. But we need to make y the subject of the formula. So I'm going to divide by 3. So I'm going to have x over 3 is equal to y squared. Then I am going to root it. So I would have y is equal to the root of x over 3. How do you write it? You say f with a negative 1x is equal to the root of x over 3. Now to draw it, you can simply use your calculator and get a few points or more wisely. When we did the straight line, what did we notice? We noticed that x became y and y became x. So you have a coordinate 1 and 3, which means on the inverse, you're going to have a coordinate 3 and 1 x becomes y and y becomes x. Now if you have a coordinate on the parabola that is 1 and 3, then you would also have 1 that is minus 1 and 3, which means on this side, if I swap it, I'm going to have a coordinate that is 3 and minus 1. Remember, x becomes y and y becomes x. Now we have the point 0, 0 and if x becomes y and y becomes x, it still remains 0, 0. So when you draw it, you can see it looks exactly like the graph, but what I did was you tilt it 90 degrees. For me, that is the best way to remember the drawing is that it literally turns like a clock 90 degrees. Can you see it turned 90 degrees? For me, that is the easiest way to remember an inverse. Now, we also know that if I was to draw the drawing, the perfect drawing would mean that it would reflect over the x is equal to y line. Now, let's draw half at a time. Let's take out this piece. And let us not pay attention to this specific piece. Look at this gear. If you take this part and I reflect it, it would be that. Can you see if you fold this line over this line, they would fold exactly on each other. If you take this little piece here, it would be exactly this little piece here. Can you see? So when we folded it over the x is equal to y line, they fold it on top of each other. Now let's take this part here. If we ignore this lines, look at the yellow. If I was to fold it on the x is equal to y line, look what happens. This yellow would fold exactly onto the other yellow. So it's always reflecting on the x is equal to 
y line. Now let's do another one. Let's do y is equal to minus 3x squared. You need to know how to do the inverse. So if we've got f of x is equal to minus 3x squared, we know we're going to make x, y, and y, x. x is equal to minus 3y squared. I'm going to divide by minus 3, so I have x over minus 3 is equal to y squared. And then you're going to root it. Now once you root it, you're going to have y is equal to the root of x over minus 3. You must rewrite it, so we have f and then a minus 1. x is equal to the root of x over minus 3. Now, if you know your nature of the roots, when you look at this, a lot of children are, okay, so it's negative. If it's negative, it's undefined. But that is not true. This x, if it's a negative, let's say I gave, make it negative 5. Can you see immediately it becomes positive? That's the first rule, that the x tends to be negative, so it becomes positive, which means you can then solve it. Let's take the next thing. Let us draw it and you'll understand how come this rule is definitely not undefined. We know we've got the point 1 and minus 3. And this side we have the point minus 1 and minus 3. If I was to swap it, I would have had minus 3 and 1. Minus 3 and 1. Remember, I'm swapping x and y. And if I swap this one, I would have had minus 3 and minus 1. And 0 remains 0, 0. Now, what you should notice is that the drawing that I just drew is an inverse, right? And do you notice that every value is a negative? Every value of x is a negative. That is how come when I substitute into this inverse, it still exists. Because as soon as you say negative divided by negative, you will get a positive. Now, what do you notice? The graph moved 90 degrees just like a clock. For me, that is the best way to remember it. If you take your clocks, it moved exactly 90 degrees. Can you see? I took the whole thing and I moved it 90 degrees. Now let us see how does it go over the XY line. Remember, it doesn't matter where I am drawing the graph. It is always going to be over the x, y line. If we take this line and we fold it over the x, y line, look at what we get. It would fold exactly into each other. Let's take this one. If I were to fold it, it would fold exactly onto this one. Now. We had discussed that the parabola is a function, but it's a many to one, so the inverse is not a function. Now let us look at this graph. If you look at the function, if you look at the function, it's the red one that I've drawn here, and let us do the vertical test. Look what happens. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. It clearly failed the vertical test. So, therefore, when we did the parabola, even though the parabola was a function, the inverse was not a function. The inverse of y is equal to minus 3x squared was the specific drawing that's in purple. Now let us do the vertical test. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. It's clearly failed. So therefore, the inverse of a parabola is not a function. Thank you for watching.